President Obama was at an event in Cleveland and he answered some questions, including, if you could do it over, what would you have done differently? I think I would have closed Guantanamo on the first day. Uh, the, uh, I didn't because at that time, as you will recall, we had a bipartisan agreement that it should be closed. The Republican, my Republican opponent uh, had also said it should have been closed. And I thought that we had enough consensus there that we could do it in a more deliberate fashion. Uh, but the politics of it got tough and people got scared by the, uh, the rhetoric around it. Uh, and once that set in, then the path of least resistance was just to leave it open even though uh, it, it's not who we are as a country. It is used by terrorists around the world to help recruit jihadists. Uh, so instead, we've had to just chip away at it year after year after year. Yeah. Part of me wants to say he tried to a certain extent to get it done. And the other part of me wants to say, uh, you're still president, dude. You can still do it. There are some things you can certainly still do. It's not, Congress didn't open it, so why would Congress have to shut it down? Think. Is, is that really all that crazy an idea? Now I get it, the judicial branch has come in in some ways and stopped certain things. So it is slightly more difficult than I'm letting on right now, but would, say, FDR uh, have gotten it done? Lyndon B. Johnson? They had many flaws. And actually, FDR is probably a bad example because of that whole Japanese internment thing. But uh, could a Democratic president with more balls have gotten it done? Possibly. So uh, here's the deal so far on Gitmo. And again, I partially give credit to Obama because he did try to a certain extent. Quote, on January 22nd, 2009, President Obama signed an order to suspend proceedings at Guantanamo Military Commission for 120 days and to shut down the detention facility that year. On January 29th, 2009, a military judge at Guantanamo rejected the White House request, creating an unexpected challenge for the administration as it reviewed how the United States brings Guantanamo detainees to trial. So, it's not like he didn't try, but are there workarounds to something like this? Possibly. So, here's the conundrum that we're now stuck in. Quote, 46 detainees are too dangerous to transfer, but not feasible for prosecution. Whoa. So that means that they're permanently stuck in limbo. So the real takeaway from this is, God, did the Bush administration fuck us. Because they opened Pandora's box and put us in an unfixable situation. Because if, so let's say you really wanted to do justice to the people who did what they did on 9-11 and to Al-Qaeda and anybody affiliated with them. You can't approach the issue the way you did. Because the second you decided to uh, take these people and torture them and put them in an extrajudicial prison, you just made it so that you can never really take them into the regular prison system because any judge would have to dismiss the case immediately because you didn't abide by the way you were supposed to procedurally to, to get to that point. So, for example, you know, I'm sure you guys have seen on Law and & Order and all these other uh, shows like that how, oh, if you didn't read the person their Miranda rights, well, then, sorry, we're going to have to throw the case out. Oh, you didn't have a warrant when you searched. Oh, sorry, we're going to have to throw the case out. All those things are real. People have rights, so you can't just, uh, you know, take them, say, I declare you don't have rights, and put them in Gitmo, because then you're never going to be able to prosecute them in the justice system, because you already broke 47 laws to get them to the point that they're at. And then people fire back and they say, yeah, but these people aren't American citizens, so they don't get rights. But that's a fundamental misunderstanding of the way our Constitution works. Our Constitution lays out restrictions on government. So when it says the government can't administer cruel and unusual punishment, that doesn't just mean for American citizens. Same thing with, you know, uh, uh, your right to privacy and your protection from unreasonable search and seizure. 
that doesn't mean that if there's a vacation in couple from Sweden that the police can say, sorry, I'm going to search everything that you have because I feel like it. No, they're not allowed to do that because the Constitution is a restriction on government. It's not just laying out positive rights. So people who make that argument don't understand the Constitution. So as much as I go after Obama on this issue, and some of it I think is absolutely merited, but you do kind of have to feel bad for him because he really is in an unfixable situation. I mean, what are you going to do with the fact that there's 46 people there who are, we kind of know that they're guilty, but there's nothing we could do. We either fucking release them or we keep them there permanently. What do you do? And this leads to the final point, which is, even though that's, that's the case, you have to close it. And the whole point is... Because it was never debatable in the first place. That was never an option in the first place. Because it's wildly unconstitutional, and it violates the Geneva Conventions and the Nuremberg Tribunal. And yes, Obama's right, it helps recruit terrorists. So, the problem is, no matter what you do now, it's going to be unpopular, and you're going to essentially be releasing madmen, but you don't have a choice, you have to shut it down. And this is a chapter in American history that, oh my god, we're going to be ripped to shreds in the eyes of the world. We already are right now, but 100 years from now, 200 years from now, people will look back at that episode uh, of the neoconservatives and what they did with Guantanamo and the torture in Abu Ghraib and Iraq and Afghanistan and even Obama and all this stuff, and they'll go, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, we're talking about something everybody historically agrees was a a horrible thing and shouldn't have been done in the first place and it, anybody who didn't stand up against it they were kind of uh, complicit in it so president obama i mean it's a hard decision but he's gonna have he needs to he needs to do it if he doesn't do it i mean he talks about his legacy all the time forget it your legacy on this issue's down the toilet for sure and remember he said i'm gonna veto uh, the ndaa the national defense authorization act if it comes to my desk and it has funding for Gitmo in there. Because I want to shut it down that much that if you send it to my desk, I will veto it. And then what happened? He caved and didn't veto it. The Republican said, huh, that's a good one. You're going to sign it. Sign it right now. And he signed it. And he, did, he threatened to veto multiple times. And every time he caved. So again, I go back to my main point on this. Part of me wants to say, well, he tried to a certain extent. There was the original executive order, which I think was on his first day in office. Uh, so, okay, you get a check mark in that area, but the other part of me wants to say, dude, you're still president, and I know it's a tough decision, and I know there are downsides, but you still can do it, and you have to do it.